Hi, and welcome to Terry Talks Movies. I have a problem this weekend. Not a big problem, but it's one I want to resolve, and it's one I'm going to share the solution to this problem in case other people feel the same way. The problem is this. On the weekend, my social media is going to fill up with people who are watching the coronation of Charles Windsor. The TV will be full of it. The radio will be full of it. All of my socials and DMs and everything will be full of basically forelock tugging lick spittles who are licking the boots of privilege. Britannia is certainly ruling the waves this week. And I don't want to do that. That's not me. That's not my kind of thing. It's not something that is within my self-image to do. I know that a certain percentage of my friends are going to be rage-watching it, using it as fuel to get Australia to be a republic and no longer be pretending to get nutrition from the placenta of England, there'll be a certain amount of people that'll go, oh, you've got to watch it, it's, the, this is historical, it's wonderful, it's something, it's pageantry, it's a, an old guy in a gold coach. So what I've got for you is this, seven things you can watch to get yourself through all of that silliness over in England and to avoid the social media tsunami of peasants sucking up to privilege. So let's start with a good one. King Ralph, 1991, Direct by David S. Ward, starring John Goodman as the King of England. Now, the way that John Goodman's character Ralph becomes King of England is kind of unusual. His grandmother Stuck the Royal back in the day, and coincidentally, all the royal families are getting a big photo op. Now, after three, one, two, three. Oh dear. And it turns out he's next in line for the throne. Now Ralph is a Las Vegas nightclub entertainer. Which is a big plus because if there's anything less entertaining than a British royal, I don't know what it is. Maybe a wishy grub or a mid-1990s Toyota Camry. <laughs> Apart from that, I can't think of anything more boring than a British royal. And to have John Goodman playing a nightclub singer lifts the game for British royals enormously. You've got a pretty good supporting cast in this one. You've got Peter O'Toole. John Hurt, Camille Corduri, Leslie Phillips, James Villiers, Jolly Richardson, Judy Parfit, all of these names from the past of English cinema, Jack Smithers and Rudolph Walker, who were in Love Thy Neighbor together back in the day, and Julian Glover, who was in an Indiana Jones movie, and Quatermass in the Pit. If that's not more entertaining than watching a whole bunch of commentators talking about a bunch of inbred German people in a parade, I don't know what is. Number two. Triple R from 2022. SS Rajamouli's great kick in the bum for the British Raj. It's got everything. And the good thing is it's 182 minutes long, so you're going to get through a lot of the coronation watching Triple R. It's got Indian people out dancing white people. It's got the come up into the British Raj. It's got the first crumbling of the empire. And it's also enormously entertaining in an action film, bromance, musical way. And if there's going to be any good music at all in the British coronation, it's not going to have anything as good as a wagon full of wild animals leaping out at a whole bunch of English soldiers. Next up, from 1970, you've got Ken Hughes' movie Cromwell, with Richard Harris playing Oliver Cromwell. You've got Alec Guinness playing Charles I, and just like in that Star Wars movie, he gets killed. Rather than abandon my kingdom to Parliament, I would come to terms with the devil himself. I would have this king's head. He gets executed, the most recent British royal to be executed. Now, I don't have too much truck with Puritanism at the best of times, but it was a pretty strong signal sent to rich people when Oliver Cromwell managed to make Charles I somewhat shorter. The movie did woefully badly because it was full of historical inaccuracies, as if every movie ever made about history was empty of historical inaccuracy. They all have historical inaccuracies. It's just a matter of whether they're fun ones or whether they're boring ones. And the cast is pretty good too. I'm just going to read you the cast. Frank Finlay, Timothy Dalton's in there, Patrick Wymark, Nigel Stock, who was a very good Watson in the Sherlock Holmes TV series, Charles Gray, who was in two James Bond films. Jeffrey Keane, who was also in James Bond films. This 
movie is full of James Bond film people. Now, I haven't seen this movie for a very long time. Saw it when I was a kid because they took us there on a school excursion. Probably to stop us from being royalists. But I probably should watch it again because I like a good beheading, which is why I keep replaying the start of Skyrim all the time. Now, you can start a short movie. It runs 2 hours 20 minutes, so you're going to kill a lot of time watching Cromwell and seeing Richard Harris being a naughty boy. Next up, I've got two streaming series for you. The first one is The Peripheral, the adaptation of William Gibson's novel with Chloe Grace Moritz in it. And if you haven't seen The Peripheral Season 1, you should. There's going to be a Season 2. It's about a young woman who, in a near future time, is given a VR headset for what's potentially a game. She's beta testing a game. But it turns out what the headset enables her to do is control a kind of android body in a more distant future time where the world has been smacked down big time. Something called the Jackpot Happens, which was this series of catastrophic events which decimated the human race many times over and led to a world that's run by various pressure groups, including a bunch of kleptocrats who run London. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the interesting thing there is that Chloe Grace Moritz's character, Flynn, in her peripheral, gets taken to a party which is held in Buckingham Palace, which is not owned by the British royal family anymore because they don't exist. Your destination. I think I know what that is. No, you know where it used to be. It's run by a whole bunch of kleptocrats. That was a little bit of a shock. And also, the, the, each episode of the series runs between 55 and 73 minutes. So if you watch all 10 episodes, you're going to see yourself well through all the silliness going on in London. And also, you're going to be highly entertained because it's a solid science fiction series. It's got incredible world building in it, fantastic acting, striking visuals, and the plot will keep you going all the way through it. That then brings me to the first episode ever of the series Black Mirror, Charlie Brooker's series of cautionary tales about the near future usually. And the very first episode was called the National Anthem. National Anthem landed like a brick in a puddle because it was transgressive, it was shocking, it was horrible and it made us look at ourselves. The premise is pretty simple. A well-beloved English princess is kidnapped. And the ransom demand is made for the British Prime Minister, Michael Callow, played by Rory Kinnear, to put his manly bits into a female pig. Alive on streaming and on TV with no cuts, moving camera work in order to save the life of a British royal who is well beloved by the public. And they only give him a few hours to arrange this. This episode brings up a lot of issues. The authorities ask that nobody watches it, but of course everybody does. It's about the public's real hunger to see people humiliated in their media, which is why it's TV series like Big Brother and I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, and all of those series, and even the competitive um, house renovation shows. They're all about somebody being humiliated and somebody being the bad guy and somebody being brought down. And so the episode gives us a solid look at the public's hunger to see people humiliated. And the fact that due to the way media is presented to us, we find it very difficult to look away from those kind of things. That's one aspect of it. And it's very solid. And the episode also does a lot of things. They just see if they can suddenly do it with CG and get somebody else to do the job with facial mapping, having the Prime Minister's face over it, that kind of thing, but that doesn't pan out because it, it's given away and it's not really going to work anyway. The British authorities try to put a lid on things, but of course it's been on YouTube for nine minutes before it was brought down. People have replicated it, it's all over Twitter, it's all over every social media, so people know this is going to happen, and they find themselves watching it. And the other part of it, the, the twist of the knife in some ways, is there's a couple of twists of the knife, but one of them is the Prime Minister gets a bump in his ratings after this occurs. And it brought up an interesting question for me. Would the Prime Minister have done it if it was an ordinary woman who doesn't have privilege, who was kidnapped? The answer is quite clearly no. And that then raises other questions about some people having privilege over others and having more access to resources and more access to 
the means by which to have their life made easier when they're in distress than others. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting little episode. It's not particularly long. It's not going to take up much of your coronation time. But it's well worth checking out. There is a new season of Black Mirror coming up, and I'm going to be watching it because it's one of the best streaming series of the last 20 years. That then brings me to something lighter. 1969's The Bed Sitting Room, directed by Richard Lester, who'd done the Beatles movies and a whole bunch of other things. Based on a play by John Antrobus and Spike Millian, it's basically the third or fourth anniversary of a nuclear war happening, and it killed 40 million people after 2 minutes and 28 seconds, including the time taken to sign the peace street. It's about the survivors of England just trying to go about their day. It's an absurdist comedy, and there's a problem because a whole bunch of people are mutating into weird things, and one person is mutating into being a bed sitting room, like a little studio apartment. So it's got that, and one of the characters, Captain Bules Martin, holds a Defeat of England medal, because he was unable to prevent Buckingham Palace from being disintegrated by the nuclear blast. So it's one of those kind of dark comedies in a way. It's got a lot of good actors in it. Let me just scroll down and give you all the good actors. Ralph Richardson, Rita Tushingham, Michael Horden is the guy who gets the medal, Arthur Lowe, Murder Washbourne, Peter Cook, Dudley Moore, Harry Sigham, Spike Millian, Marty Feldman, Jimmy Edwards, Roy Kinnear, the father of Roy Kinnear, and Dandy Nichols as Mrs. Ethel Shrek, who is the Queen of England because she is the closest person to the royal family who has survived the nuclear holocaust. God save Mrs. Ethel Shrek. Um, it's a very dark comedy, it's very silly and absurdist, and it's got that kind of anarchic 1960s British edgy humour, which came before the 1970s British edgy humour, and the 1980s and the 1990s and the zeros and the teens, and as well in that really great area of transgressive, mocking privilege British comedy that I love so much. Then we could have forgotten British comedy from 1987 in that punk era, in that new wave British comedy time. It's got a lot of people who were involved in that movement. Hi, we're starting a people's uprising. Do you fancy joining us? Yes, I'd love to. A movie called Eat the Rich, which stars Lana Pillay as a woman called Alex, who's a waiter in a high-class London restaurant called Bastards. And uh, basically, she's treated shabbily by the upper-class people who frequent this restaurant. She's fired for being rude to the clientele and suddenly goes on a rampage, which ends up with her being involved in a restaurant where Eat the Rich is taken to a very literal level. Now, again, this is one I haven't watched in a long time, but I probably should, and one that I'm going to watch on Coronation Day. Supporting cast is fantastic. Supporting cast is full of fantastic English comedy actors. Kathy Burke's in there, Robbie Coltrane. Fiona Richmond's in there for some reason. You might want to Google Fiona Richmond if you don't know who she is. Rick Mayle, um, Jennifer Saunders, Dawn French, Adrian Edmondson, Paul McCartney. Whatever happened to that guy? Lemmy, Kill Mister from Motorhead. Let's see, Nigel Planer's in there as well. Miranda Richardson, Bill Wyman, and even Sandy Shaw turns up in the cameos. Monsieur Dupin. Monsieur Dupin. So, it's got a lot of people from the previous 20 or 30 years of English popular culture in a movie about a cannibalistic restaurant where Eat the Ridges take us seriously. That's probably the best one to watch, comes as secret. That's the one that hits that sweet spot of mocking the rubbish that's happening over there and giving me the right feels to let me weather all the crap on social media that's going to happen while people are sucking up to privilege which is something i never do i I really don't like doing it i don't like the privilege that i have just for being a white male in a safe society and i try to be as aware of that as i possibly can but anyway 
Now, if you've enjoyed the, the stuff with the coronation, good on you. You know, fair enough. You've got a different opinion than me. And I'm a big boy now and I can accept the fact that that opinion will be different. For many of us who don't feel the same way, it's going to be ubiquitous. It's going to be incredibly annoying. It's going to mean absolutely nothing to the continuation of our lives, apart from the fact that the backs of coins, which we rarely use now, is going to change. It's going to be a weird week or two, so if you aren't in love with the idea of a billionaire, it doesn't seem particularly bright being in charge of things and who isn't Rupert Murdoch, then it's going to be a rough couple of weeks. But some of these movies and series will see you through. And the other thing you can do while all that crap's going on is Hit one of the playlists on this channel and watch some of my movie reviews. There's over 300 of them there. Some are better than others because I'm still on a learning curve with all this. You can go through them chronologically if you like and watch me age and watch me get slightly, slightly better. Thanks for watching this one. It's a bit different. But I just had to do something about this particular conundrum that I have. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. You can also support the channel by donating at Patreon dot com slash terry talks movies we're getting a few more patreon supporters too and thank you very much to all of the wonderful people who do donate i really appreciate it it helps me with the wherewithal to run the channel and it's nice to know that the work i put into this is appreciated so anyway until next time after all of this rubbish is over watch some good movies watch some bad movies don't watch the gold carriage and i'll catch you next time